All right, this is Parka Office Hours. Today is the 26th of September, 2023. Um, and we have a bunch of really cool updates um, about the Parka project. First um, off is uh, the Parka server. We released uh, version 0 0.19 of the Parka server last week. Um, and we've been talking about some of the things from uh, that we've been putting into this release um, over the last couple of hours already. But just to recap, um, or let me pull up our demo cluster so that we can have a look at that. Um, we now have a fully redesigned Parka UI. And in case you haven't already seen that, that's primarily everything that happens down here, but actually some of the um, metrics graph got redesigned as well. But what, what should look particularly different is all these interactions with the icicle graph, as well as these buttons that used to be kind of a little bit all over the place. Um, and now it's really nicely um, grouped. So um, that's, Item number one. The second one is more of an internal change, but it's something that we've been working on for some time. And I think it's a huge kind of quality improvement to Parka, um, which is we are now 100% serving um, Apache Arrow based APIs. Um, and this has a couple of reasons. One, um, our database already outputs um, Apache Arrow, and therefore, um, you know, we're staying within the same format. Uh, we can do a bunch of zero copy things. All of that helps a lot with performance. And then um, the, um, yeah, then, uh, yeah, and now, now we're just completely consistent um, with all of our APIs there. All right. Um, then the next one is the ability to filter and group by profile labels. So the first, I'm first actually going to show the ability to group by profile labels. So let me, for example, filter down to just having our Parka server here. And we can now say in, in the icicle graph, group all of this data by the profile labels that are attached. And then we get something like this, and we can see, you know, Parka appears to be running on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven threads. Um, and what's kind of nice to see is that they're all pretty evenly um, utilized. So some of our customers at Polar Signals, for example, are using this data to be able to see, you know, are these threads equally utilized? In Go, you typically don't um, have very much control over um, you know, operating system threads, but this may be very different um, with other technologies like C++ or Rust, um, where this may actually have a very big impact on the ability to build high-performance applications. Um, so that's um, grouping by profile labels. Now I want to show you also the ability to filter by profile labels. Ah. Um, and again, I'm going to just filter uh, to see only this um, um, process. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the ability to filter by profile labels, I could have got, could have done the, um, like I could have filtered by the thread name or thread ID that we were just grouping by as well. But something that I want to show here is that we can also potentially have instrumentation in our applications that do add additional labels and um, something that that's actually something that we've started to do in Arca itself so we have uh, profile labels for each component so we can now for example say okay of all of this profiling data show me only the profiling data that actually belongs to the profile to the component um, that we call scraper within um, Parka. And we can see two things that just happened. We can see that this data is now filtered. So previously, um, 
we saw that we were spending something like three cores um, by the Parker server. And now we can see only the scraper component uses about you know 1.5 cores or so. Um, and we can see that you know basically all of that is spent in this ingestion path, um, which is to be expected. But the really cool thing is now this can be used to, to do things like adding a distributed tracing ID or you can add a customer ID or you know anything that's useful to you to, to understand your system better can now be used um, as labels here. As you may have noticed, as I was typing this label, we don't yet have um, autocomplete for this, but that's something that's going to come in the future. All right. Um, let's see what else did I have on my list. Ah, yeah, the very last one is not really one to um, kind of demo, but um, I think it's still very cool to talk about. So um, maybe let's go uh, and have a look at some Go documentation. Actually, Go profile guide optimization. So in Go one twenty one. This new feature went uh, generally available. It started out in Go 120, um, and it's Go, uh, Go profile guided optimization. So this is basically a compiler feature where we can give the compiler some profiling data from our real life um, applications, and it can use that profiling data to make opinionated decisions that are good for our particular situation that may not always be a good decision for the profile uh, for the compiler to make but because we have real profiling data it can make better um, optimization decisions um, and the really exciting thing is that um, uh, Parka is now the only other um, tool out there that can actually um, provide go profiling data um, for PGO that doesn't come from the Go runtime itself. So I actually worked with um, some of the compiler team to get this new page. Oh, I didn't open it. Um, we have actually haven't added Parka to this list just yet. But now that we've actually released uh, 0 0.19, we can start putting um, Parka onto this list as well. So um, yeah, I think that's very exciting because now we can use the data that is collected by the Parka agent with eBPF for profile guided optimizations, which is, as we can see, kind of kind of a first at least if we can delete these these docs. Um, so yeah, that's everything. Um, Parka server. Did I miss anything, Manoj or Javier or Samara? All right. Manoj, is there anything UI-wise that you wanted to add? Uh, no, Frederick. We pretty much covered everything. OK, cool. Then um, we have some updates from Parker Agent, um, which Javier is going to do. Yeah, so in the past couple of weeks, we've been making a lot of changes, mostly in efficiency, but we have also added a couple of new features. So I think that one of the most exciting things that we haven't talked about too much um, yet, but we will, is that we have finally landed support for um, ARM64 unwinding um, with, uh, without frame pointers. So this is something um, that is still kind of experimental, but it's already there and you can give it a shot and let us know what you think. We have also been investing a lot of time in reliability. We had a bunch of um, potential uh, panics that we have removed from the code base. Uh, we had some data races in our caching infrastructure that have been fixed. And also we've made a bunch of optimizations when it comes to memory and allocation. So right now by default, the heap size of Parka agents should be significantly lower. Um, and this is a trade-off between classic trade-off between CPU and, and memory because um, we have an object full pool for the object uh, files that, that we care about. Uh, creating uh, these in-memory data structures to represent them is a bit expensive. So that's why we cache them. But by caching them, we increase our total heap usage. So we have reduced this number, but it is customizable. So if you want to trade off um, using more memory to use less CPU, and um, you can change that with, I think it's dash dash um, object pool size, and then set up to a higher number than the default. Um, another thing that I'm 
uh, excited about is that uh, we have added uh, panic reporting to the agent. Um, so what this means is that if the agent panics um, in any go routine, um, it's gonna send an, um, an RPC request to, um, to Parka and it's gonna let you know of the past uh, 2000 bytes of STBR and uh, in the future, we're gonna add more, add more metadata. So this is gonna allow people that run Parka Agent and Parka to understand why Parka Agent panics or fails or basically exits in any non-successful way. Um, so yeah, if you gather any data interesting in your setups, let us know because those are some um, potential reliability improvements we wanna make. Um, so we that was kind of what we did in the previous release we did last week. Uh, that was uh, VO250. But uh, we have quickly released uh, VO251, which adds further improvement. So we have added uh, more metrics to understand how the um, agent is doing in production. Uh, another change that we have made is that um, some of our users have reported some bugs that um, basically under heavy load, the agent seems to be losing samples. So after a lot of debugging, um, we have found what we think is the, uh, the issue, which is that um, we, we have like um, a buffer between kernel and user space where um, all this information about, for example, which processes we need to add uh, in user space to start profiling. Um, so which what are these process IDs and why should we add them? Um, the problem with this is because BPF never wants to block in, 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 in kernel space, um, it will never lock and it will never wait for user space to read from this buffer. So what this means in practice is if the buffer is full, it's gonna overwrite values. So we might not be able to see some important information we need in user space. So the way we have uh, tackled this problem is by rate limiting uh, the events we send per PID from BPF. And um, so that, that should help this problem. But if you see any issues with Park and not being able to profile uh, some processes you care about or losing samples, please let us know. Uh, we have also um, optimized memory usage by reducing about a bunch of things. Um, the amount of bytes we keep in heap because we used to keep too many um, mappings in memory, as well as reducing the amount of allocations we do by optimizing the Procafest library that we use in multiple parts of our code base, but also it's used by many other people. So hopefully that should reduce some cycles um, in the world. Um, and besides that, we have a small breaking change. So um, before this release, enabling the verbose logs for BPF was uh, dash dash verbose BPF logging. And now it is BPF verbose logging, but this is all in the release notes. So yeah, uh, feel free to take a look and let us know if you have any feedback. The only other thing that I'm not sure we mentioned last time, maybe we did, maybe we didn't, is that the agent right now is has like more strict checks on whether it can run or not. Uh, so we have that both on the permissions of the user and also on the environment that is running. So it is possible that the agent refuses to run um, with certain users or certain environments, such as, for example, different PID namespaces that are not the root one. Um, so if you see this error and you think this error is not, uh, shouldn't happen, again, please open an issue and let us know. But yeah, I think that's pretty much everything on the agent side. Um, yeah, um, is there anything else that you think is worth talking about? Or I, th I think this is pretty much it. I think the last couple of times, um, there were various language support features still in the works. So maybe we can take a moment to talk about those. Sorry, the connection dropped. Ah, I was just gonna say last, um, like the um, in the last office hours, like Ruby, Python, and ARM sixty four were still in the works. So maybe you wanna um, talk about that work. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so yeah, this is the other very exciting thing. So we have made, um, we have committed the first implementation for both Python and Ruby. Um, so far, this is kind of beta status, but um, we're going to keep on iterating on it. Right now, Python supports multiple versions. Everything's um, on the release notes and on the PR. And on Ruby, we only support one Ruby version, but this is going to change very soon. Um, but yeah, like this is pretty exciting because we can see in a whole, uh, in a single flame graph, we can instrument both the interpreter itself, so see the native frames. We can also see the interpreted frame, so your actual application, if you write your application code in Python or Ruby, 
and then the kernel stack. So for example, if you call um, the open system call from Python, you should be able to see a cohesive stack that goes from kernel to native stack to the actual Python stack. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty exciting and um, should hopefully allow you to understand your application more in depth, especially since both Ruby and Python and many other languages rely heavily on both native extensions. And sometimes the bottleneck can be on how you call some APIs from the standard library or from your own language. So um, yeah, I think this is super exciting. Um, then something else we also did is um, we have some improvements on how we deal with um, V8 uh, symbolization of JIT symbols, uh, which should be significantly better. So yeah, I think that those are some of the most important changes. Um, in the next couple uh, like um, Park Agent like chats, um, we'll keep on discussing like the further improvements we make to um, all these unwinders because we still have quite a bit to do, but they are still they are already something you can give a shot, a try, and let us know if you have any feedback. Very cool. And I was actually uh, just in this moment. I wasn't actually preparing this for for this meeting, but. Um, Sumera and I were actually testing um, ARM64 support um, earlier today, or like 10 minutes before this before this meeting. And uh, what's really exciting is that we can actually see um, everything. This is a, an example uh, ARM64 cluster um, on uh, GKE. And um, I think what's really cool to see is that things like uh, fluent bit, which is written um, in C, is actually being um, unwinded successfully, right? We can we can see that in these stacks. These all look super high quality. So that's extremely exciting and actually something we haven't spoken about publicly yet because we're still working on a blog post um, announcing all of this. Um, but everyone in this call can already know now um, that there's going to be ARM64 support announced pretty soon. Um, if you carefully read the change log, you may have already known anyway. But now this is real, right? Like we, we can see it um, on real, real um, ARM64 hardware. So yeah, super exciting and very nice job, um, Sumera, for making this a reality. That's all I wanted to share. Um, I think with that, we are at the end of our um, scheduled agenda. So um, if there are any questions that you have about um, the Parker project or any problems that you've run into, um, now you have the open floor. Um, just feel free to unmute yourself, ask your questions or All right. If there are no questions, oh. yeah, can, please go ahead. Me, can, I, can I ask? Yeah, yeah anything I'm you just, want. Yeah, I'm just I'm the, the fan, you know, first time here. So I'm awesome. excited to see that you have something great to unwind many things that I like. But I have a question regarding to the language that you support. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess. That Everybody will laugh, but how about PHP? Ah, great question. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, no, no judgment. Um, like, there's plenty of um, PHP in the world that supports um, many, um, many important systems. So, you know, yeah, so absolutely no, no, no judgment. Um, we don't actually support PHP um, at a very wide range however there is some version of php and maybe javier knows better or someone else on the call knows better there's some version of php that we do support um, because it uses i think a, a jit or something um, but we don't have very comprehensive support for php at the moment that's but if you want to follow up on discord we can figure out which version of php that is and um you know, figure out 
what that path would look like. Yeah, because we have we have a bunch of PHP application and like uh, yeah, you, you you know that there's a needs to provide them all. Uh, the good news when I see in Piroscoff in the previous version, like before 0 0.1, they have PHP profiling, which is using the library called something PHP Spy, which uh, give me quite a useful stack for a PHP. Like you can look into the PHP application and, and profiling pretty well. But somehow after 1.0, they drop that support. So I, I'm kind of sad about this thing. I look around, there's nobody wants to support PHP anymore. Uh, yeah, so this one to ask if you have anything, any idea to support PHP in the near future, that's it. So we absolutely want to support PHP. As a matter of fact, we, we want to support any language, but um, PHP is definitely, on the horizon. Um, it's not the next set of languages uh, that we're gonna be looking at, but it's probably going to be in the batch after that. So realistically speaking, it's probably more like towards the end of the year, maybe beginning of next year that we'll get to a more comprehensive um, PHP support. However, like I said, um, there are some versions of PHP that we do already support. So maybe if you can upgrade your versions um, or you're already on a new enough version, it may already work anyway. Uh, we are 7.4. We, uh, like I said, I don't know off the top okay. of my head okay. which version it is that we support, mm -hmm. but um, let's have a conversation on Discord. Are you already on our Discord? Yeah, yeah, I'm in there. Cool. Then um, we'll, we'll, we'll follow up with the, with the with Python support, uh, sorry, PHP support on there. Yeah, thank you. So uh, another question, uh, maybe I missed it, but uh, you would just talk about on why things in ARM 624, but uh, recently I read that you can unwind like things in uh, AMD 64 as well without frame pointer, but it's still in the experiment phase. And like, uh, how is how's it going with uh, AMD 64 stack and widening with the frame pointer? It is going to be stable soon or? Uh, yeah, so AMD 64 know. is stable. So oh. um, AMD 64 uh, works, works perfectly. Um, we don't, um, I mean, you know, software is software and then there may be maybe bugs. But um, we have several customers using it in production at very large scale. Um, wow. So we we know oh. that this works well, and the ARM sixty four support is essentially that same support extended up to ARM sixty four platforms, of course. Oh, great! Great, it is will be the cooler future. Keep cooler future. Like, uh, yes, thank you very I much. I, 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 yeah, yeah. Thank you very much uh, for that. I, I would I would try it for sure and will you do any kind of feedback that I have in that in that thing. Yeah, thank awesome. you. Thank you. Yeah, we agree. It's a it's an extremely important feature to be able to profile absolutely every process on the planet. That's kind of the goal <laughs> of this project. Yes. So far only you can do that, right? Because previously I I heard that uh, profiler now Elastic can do something with the frame pointer, but it's it's not open source anymore. That's right. So in like fully open source, Parka is definitely the only project that I've heard of. Maybe there are others, um, but um, as far as I'm aware, Parka Parka Agent is the only profiler on the planet that can do this. Um, that is open source, where both the kernel program and the user space program, everything is open source. Great, great, great. Thank you. That's it, I have no more questions. Awesome, very good questions. Anything else, anybody or anybody want to do a show and tell or something? All right. 
If there's nothing, going once, going twice. All right, then this was Parker Office Hours, September 26th, uh, 2023. Thank you so much for all the awesome questions. Please come back next time um, and learn about all of the uh, new developments. We're a very fast moving project, so probably in two weeks we'll already have new pretty exciting stuff to, to talk about. Till then, happy profiling and have a wonderful local time. See y'all. Bye. Bye.